Jesus sent Peter and John out with these instructions. Go into Jerusalem and make the preparations for us to eat the Passover. A man will meet you carrying a jar of water. So say to him, the, uh, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover Seder with my disciples? The owner will show you a large furnished upper room. Make the preparations there. They went out and found everything as Jesus had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, Jesus took the place of the table with the apostles. Jesus said to them, I long to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I tell you, I will not eat again until everything is fulfilled in the reign of God. Then Jesus took the bread and gave thanks, broke it, and then said again, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus did the same with a cup of wine and said, This is the cup, the new covenant in my blood which will be poured out for you. After supper, Jesus went out and made his way, as usual, to the Mount of Olives. The disciples accompanied him. When they reached the place, Jesus said to them, Pray that you not be put to the test. Then Jesus withdrew about a stone's throw from them, knelt down, and prayed. Abba, Father, if it is your will, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. When Jesus rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, exhausted with grief. Why do you sleep? Wake up, and pray that you not be subjected to the trial. While Jesus was speaking, a crowd suddenly appeared, with Judas at their head. Judas came over to Jesus to embrace him, but Jesus said, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Those who were around Jesus, realizing what was going to happen, said, Rabbi, should we strike them with our swords? One of them struck the attendant of the, highest of the high priest, cutting off an ear. Jesus said, Stop! No more of this! Then Jesus touched the attendant's ear and healed him. The crowd seized Jesus and led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders had gathered. But Jesus followed, but, but Peter followed him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the highest priest. A maid said, a maid seeing him said, "This is this man also who was with him." But Peter denied it, saying, "Woman, I do not know him." This happened to Peter two more times that night. Each time he denied Jesus. When he heard the rooster crow at dawn, he left that place. He went out and wept bitterly. Some of those holding Jesus began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying, Prophesy! And the guards hit him. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes and the whole council held a consultation, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so. But when Jesus was accused by the chief of priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave Pilate no answer, not even a single charge, so that Pilate himself wondered greatly. Now, at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner who they wanted. And they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? The whole crowd cried at once. We want Barabbas. Pilate spoke to the crowd, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. As their shouts increased in volume, Pilate decided that their demands should be met. So he released Barabbas, and Jesus was handed over to be crucified. Two others were also led off by the Roman soldiers with Jesus, criminals who were to be put to death. When they reached the place called Golgotha, which means the skull, they crucified Jesus. Together with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Abba, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. 
Then the Romans divided his garments, rolling dice for them. The people stood there watching. The rulers, however, jeered him and said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he really is the Messiah of God, the Chosen One. The Roman soldiers also mocked him. They served Jesus sour wine and said, If you are really the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was an inscription above Jesus that read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there beside him insulted Jesus too, saying, Are you really the Messiah? Then save yourself and us. But the other answered the first with a rebuke. Don't you even fear God? We are only paying the price for what we have done. But this one has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your glory. Jesus replied, The truth is, today you'll be with me in paradise. It was about noon, and darkness fell on the whole land until three in the afternoon, because of the eclipse of the sun. Then the curtain in the sanctuary was torn in two, and Jesus uttered a loud cry and said, Abba, into your hands I commit my spirit. Saying this, Jesus breathed for the last time. One of the religious elders named Joseph, who had not consented to the actions of Caiaphas' court, approached Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Joseph was from Arthmenia and lived in anticipation of the reign of God. Joseph took the body down, wrapped it in fine linen, and laid it in a tomb cut out of the rock where no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who accompanied Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph, saw the tomb, and watched as the body was placed in it. Then they went home to prepare the burial spices and ointments, but they rested on the Sabbath, according to the law, and waited until the next day, the first day of the week, to finish the burial rituals. 